So it was a big weekend in combat sports. You know, we had one championship on Friday. There was the Canelo fight, and then we ended it off at UFC 288 on Saturday. And we'll cover one championship a little more in a video next week. Like we're uh, we're gonna talk a tiny bit about the American debut for one at the end here. But for this video specifically, we're going to focus more on the UFC because there's a lot to talk about and we probably don't want this video to be like two hours long. So we'll cover the UFC mainly in this one and stay tuned for like a more in-depth video about one next week. But um, UFC 288 was phenomenal. But before we get into that, actually, I do want to talk about this. So we got a couple more props here for the show. We got signed MMA gloves by uh, Ariel Hawani and New York Rick from the MMA Hour. Um, shout out to Professor Hershon for hooking us up with those. That'll be a new cool onset prop along with our secret juice. You know, always got to have that. <laughs> but um, stay prepared. Of course. Dude, the one who has the secret juice is always the one who wins. Yeah. But um, anyway, <laughs> UFC 288, Sterling, you know, Remains champion, Aljamain Sterling defeats Henry Cejudo by split decision. 248-47s for Sterling, and then 148-47 for uh, Cejudo. Now, I think a lot of people after this fight have been talking about just the scorecards and, you know, who who did you score the fight for? And I'll start with, like, mine. I gave 1, 2, and 4 to Sterling after a second watch. It was, like, tough on the first watch, but I still had it for Sterling. It was just, like, round by round. It was harder to score, like, live. But after the second watch, I don't know, I feel more com confident that Sterling was the one who got it done. But I'm not hating on anybody who thought Cejudo got it because it was a competitive fight, really close fight. But what were your score scorecards looking like for this one? Uh, so I think it was one of those, you know, split decisions that it really could have gone either way. Like, I think if you're somebody that, you know, feels very strongly about um, you know, your per maybe your personal scorecard of this fight and who should have won or how, you know, the um, that official decision should have ruled out, then I think, like, you know, you have to, like, you really got to come with a good argument because, you know, if I personally feel like, honest, you know, with Aljamain Sterling being the winner, I think, I, I honestly would, I could have, you know, I would have gave him, not, you know, not to say that I would have, like, outright definitively give it to him, like, it was, like, you know, a really close fight, but... I think you. I think a unanimous decision. Like you know, I think that would have sufficed too. Honestly, I could have seen that too because I think I think Alger like straight up had him beat on the feet the entire way through. I think Henry Cejudo was reeling in those championship rounds on the feet of you know just trying to like trying to obviously set up the wrestling as much as possible. But I think Alger had. I think Alger came like really like really prepared, well trained, like all around for this matchup. Um, you know, despite whatever you might say about Henry Cejudo's layoff and his return, how long he's um, you know, since you know how long it's been since his last fight and all that, like, do you that think that was, was a factor at all? For someone like Henry Cejudo, I honestly no, no way. Like a freaking gold medalist Olympian, that guy who's you know, cardio for you know, gas tank for days. Like, I think you know. Does it matter? Like, sure, obviously, especially yeah. when you're facing somebody that that's come such a long way, like all Jermaine Sterling has over the years since uh, Henry Cejudo's last fight. Um, so yeah, obviously, definitely just hopping right back into a championship fight. Like that's gonna, you know, that's gonna play its um, it's gonna play its its factor. But um, yeah, no, I, I don't of, think uh... it's an excuse or really anything like that. Like this is. Henry, this is the, you know, triple C we're talking about here, so... Yeah, and, like, um, Olympic gold medalist, too, at that. I think, like, I agree with you. I think mentally it probably wasn't a factor to him. I don't know about physically. Like, he looked in good shape, and he was, like, there all five rounds, but I think in this fight, I think he under... I don't know about underestimated, but he definitely didn't think that Aljo's awkwardness was going to give him as many problems as it did, because those first three rounds, he was really struggling to find his range, and... Even in like the later rounds when he was connecting more, he was throwing that's and missing what I, a lot. That's what I love. That's what I love about this. Like he's he's not called the Funk Master for no reason. Like <laughs> this dude's fight style, like you know, it's like it's pretty freaking unorthodox, and it's really entertaining to watch for one thirty five. Like it does, you know, kind of remind you like a freaking Dominic Cruz who just has really like his straight up just own style, and you know, like he can now in Aljamain Sterling's case, like. He's just, you know, 
I kind of see it in like you know the the Cheeto Vera sense where like he just you know he's got he knows who he's getting in each of his opponents and he just seems to like keep progressively like you know improving in each like area that he needs to improve in and so now looking forward we with them and you know it's no it's no freak you know i don't think it's no secret who the next challenger is going to be yeah they had o'malley coming out there with the thriller jacket after that i thought that was weird to be honest like i usually like the in cage stuff but considering like how close that fight was and everybody also wanted to hear like if cejudo was going to retire like i thought bringing o'malley in there and i'm like a fan of o'malley too but i thought that was kind of a weird move because the fight itself like sterling's movement was Given Cejudo problems, obviously, the whole time. I thought the grappling in that fight was really fun, honestly. There were a lot of cool exchanges in that. Aljo held his own, really. That's what I'm saying, man. But, yeah, that's you know, all he had to really do. Yeah, and essentially. I, did you think coming in, because I thought that the weight could have been an advantage, but I didn't think that like how long Aljo was was going to be as much of an advantage as it was. Like I figured Cejudo, even if he had trouble at first closing the distance, I thought that... As the fight went on, he was going to have like an easier time, and it really never seemed to improve for him. And even with the wrestling, he just never was able to hold Aljo down. I think like because I was watching it with like a few people, and um, they were talking about just how Cejudo just doesn't use like jujitsu really at all. Like he had Aljo in a couple like good positions, like in like the front headlock, but he just doesn't really do anything with it. And Aljo as like a jujitsu ace, pretty much like. You're, you're not yeah, going to finish a guy like that, you know? That's interesting. It's like, you know, for somebody like the leg strength and just like the base that freaking Henry Cejudo has, like, you know, you would think like maybe he would like try to factor in, um, you know, just maneuvering however he can at jiu-jitsu. Um, but I don't know, man. I guess like just that's just how highly, you know, him and his coaches like feel about, you know, just his wrestling as it is. And so... Um, yeah, I don't know, because, yeah, I think it was, I think the real tell, tell of the story here is, you know, the feat for Henry Sudo. And if, you know, if this is not his last fight, you know, who were we looking, you know, who are they looking to give him next? Yeah, no, I'm definitely down to talk about the future. I didn't even mean to, like, gloss over the O'Malley point, because I do want to go back to yeah. that. But I thought this fight was just, like, so close that it was worth talking a little more about. Yeah. But, you know close fight i think me and you both because I, I think you said you had it for sterling too right so yeah definitely. we both agree on that yeah. so sadly not much debate for you guys for, at least for this yeah, show exactly i wouldn't have argued a unanimous decision if they gave it to him but um, yeah. yeah you know what I, I this is like a bit of a pivot but i'm curious to see what you think of this i don't like when people say like yeah that was a split decision that seemed about right i'm like how could you know like because think of like think about it conceptually right like a split decision is not a cl- like it's not a close fight it's a split decision because th- they were out of the three judges not all three agreed like but i don't like when people were like yeah it was, that was probably a split decision i'm like that's not how that works like you get, <laughs> like there's only a split decision when there's more than one person like you're watching it it's one decision there's no split like i get Look, saying it's a I, close yeah, fight yeah but it's, I, I hate when people it's like my pet peeve because dude i see people on like big shows like they'll be like yeah you know a split decision seemed about it, right yeah, so I'm like no to sound, just to sound you know like professional exactly i'm like i get like the yeah. point but not yeah. like a casual. <laughs> yeah, like people got to stop saying that because like I heard, of, I, well, I didn't hear. I saw a few people on just like social media saying that about this fight. I'm like, God, that just pisses me off. <laughs> but anyway, back to like uh, these guys' future. You were talking about Cejudo at first. I don't. I think this is probably his last fight unless something interesting pops up. But he talked about. Um, sorry, he talked about like after this one, wanting to make history. And I don't really know, like, where he could do that from here. Like, because I don't know if you... He's not going up to 145 now and just getting a title fight. So, does he want to have a number one contender fight? I saw someone say he should fight Max Holloway. That'd be <laughs> that'd be a crazy one. I don't know how he does in that, to be honest. But, I don't know. I, I just don't see any reason for Cejudo to come back. Because, like, what does he really need to prove? Like, I'm not saying I don't want to see him. Like, dude... The guy's an incredible fighter, one of the best minds in the sport, but he's been coaching people these past few years, and he seems to be really good at that and, like, catching some momentum there. But what history really is there left for him to make? 
Yeah, your guess is as good as mine, man. Honestly, I, I have no idea. So I think it's his last fight, too. So, um, Maybe. But, yeah, what do we know at the end of the day? We just got to wait and see. Yeah, if it is, I mean, salute to you. Yeah. <laughs> Great career. I think, more, so I think we're going to get more out of talking about the two guys that we know are right. not done and still have, you know, are about to. They're Now they're going to settle it between each other. Sean O'Malley, Aljamain Sterling. Um, Marab stealing his thriller jacket made my night. Like that was so. You dude. see him? He was putting it on <laughs> right when he took it off. Like five seconds later, Marab's just standing there with it on. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, why does he have it now? I thought that was so funny. And Sean, oh, Sean O'Malley like played it off well too. Man. Sean yeah. said that he thought it Sean, was the yeah. it was like a guy just taking his coat, like just to be like like a coat, like the guy at the coat rack at the Applebee's or whatever. Oh my god! But then I wonder if he did he keep it? Did Sean get it back? Do we? Does anybody have any information on this? Did it, is that Marab's yeah, dude, jacket let us now? Know. Yeah, I mean that's not the main story. I don't like. I've been glossing over this like amazing fight that is pretty much just been laid yeah. out in front of us to talk about the fight and then to talk about Sean O'Malley's lost jacket. But let's get into the the actual brass tacks here. Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley. Dana was saying that they want to do it in Boston, but Aljo seemed kind of disinterested in that. But either way, this seems like the next fight. But the this is the fight to make because he's not going to fight Marab. But at the same time, I, I think it's kind of a rough spot to go to for Sterling because Sterling's title reign, man, has just been rough because you have the... The way he won it with Jan, which people hate. Then there was the split decision that he beat him in the defense that people debate about. TJ was a great win, but then people are talking about his shoulder. This one's another one where people are arguing if he even won it. And then you could already like think about it in advance. If he beats Sean O'Malley the way that he's beaten a lot of other guys, they're going to be like, well, Sean O'Malley's not all that anyway. Like So I don't know what Sterling really can do at this point to just get the credit that he deserves. It kind of sucks because he's such a great fighter, but nobody really gives him the credit. But do you think that there's a path for him to kind of solidify himself after an O'Malley fight, if he even gets through O'Malley? Um, yeah, that's tough. It's tough because first, like, yeah, you just said you got to get past O'Malley and, you know, who's so sure that, you know, he's he's going to do that? Like, I obviously, it's fair, like, you know, the fight was booked today. Like, he'd be, you know... I wouldn't say an overwhelming favorite, but a clear favorite, unlike this fight with Cejudo yeah. just now. It's a bad stylistic um, matchup, too, but I think Sean has some things that he could offer Sterling up, too. Like, because the thing in this fight is Henry's, like, a lot shorter, and, like, not just in height, but, like, in range compared to Aljo. Like, his reach was a lot smaller, but O'Malley's huge for that division. So I think that that's going to be a problem for Sterling, at least on the feet. Yeah. But uh, this is a true striker versus well, I grappling. Well, I think, you know. R- wrestling with a guy like Henry Cejudo for Aljamain Sterling, like, that can go a long way with, you know, dealing with O'Malley's size and all that, so, um, yeah, that's, um, I saw, I saw, I saw, um, after, actually afterwards the fight too, which was, made it even funnier, that, um, Sean O'Malley tweeting, like, he pretty much was just, like, hoping so badly that Henry Cejudo won so, like, he could just beat the fuck out of him, I think that's what the tweet actually said. They've been joined for a long time now, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so, Man, that's um now that's like a legit freaking fantasy fight that yeah. you know we're probably never ever gonna see. So um, yeah, but on the other hand, to reel back to to reel back to Henry Cejudo, I actually did see you know I don't know if you you know because you could probably speak a little bit on it too if you've seen something about it. But I did see I don't want to say an official quote by Brandon Moreno calling for a fight. With oh yeah, them. he he tweeted. So I mean, not a quote, but he did do that. Like you yeah. are right. Yeah, he said, like, don't retire yet. He's like, he wanted to defend his title in July and then said, come yeah. up to 35 and fight him. That's not going to happen, though. Yeah. Not yeah. because, like, Definitely. you have... I that, think the UFC why, won yeah. at 25, but I think, like... Because Cejudo's not the champ at 35, so they don't want Moreno to win at 25 and then go up and fight in a meaningless fight at yeah, 135. Yeah, I didn't put much stock into that. It just came you know, came to mind as I just brought up the O'Malley tweet. Um, yeah, they have a beef, like low-key. I remember, because if... Do you remember that Cejudo was training Figueredo before those fights? And he was, like, talking all sorts of shit, really, about Brandon Moreno, because I think they used to train together, and Moreno left in, like, a weird way, and it was on, like, weird terms. 
And I know they were having like a little back and forth before those fights. So I think there's like a bit of a history there. So I think Brandon kind of wants that fight like a lot because I think he wants to kind of shut him up. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if there's a realistic path to it, to be honest. But I don't know. Both of those divisions are in like an interesting spot because Sterling has the fight that's clearly matched up next. But if he wins that, you really don't know what's going to happen from there. But Bantamweight's so deep, I'm sure something will fall into place. Yeah, which, is you know, you got Bantamweight that's so deep and Flyweight that's not. So Yeah, it's like he's Moreno's in like a tough spot because I think, who's he even fighting? It's um, Pantoja, right? Yeah. In July, so yeah, that's yeah. a fight that needed to happen. We didn't really talk about that, but me and you have been beating the drum for Pantoja to is get that, that title inter- shot. Is that International Fight Week? Yeah, I think it is. I think, um, is the main event, like, officially Volkanovski Yair? I don't know if that's official, but I know they were, like, shooting for that. Wow. But, I didn't think that was going to be happening. Oh, dude, that, you I got mean, Volkanovski. Like, you know, this fight. soon, yeah. yeah I mean, what a freaking, yeah. What a beast, dude. Yeah, I mean, speaking I, of guys, go though. <laughs> go on, go no, on. No, I was literally, I thought it was a good transition because I was say, speaking of guys who want to fight every two months, Gilbert Burns with his third fight this year already. <laughs> and we're at, like we're recording this on May 7th. And I don't know, that was a tough one to kind of see for him. I mean, him versus Bilal. I thought that like Bilal was doing well even like before Gilbert kind of hurt his shoulder, but... He, Bilal's another guy who can't really catch a break with the fans because this was a good win for him. I, I was impressed with how like disciplined he was with staying on his game plan, just like pumping the jab out there because Gilbert really is not like I, good yeah, against the dude, jab. I thought, like, <laughs> like, yeah, I thought this was, you know, probably at least in terms of you want to maybe say his last three to five bouts, like this is probably the best that Bilal Muhammad has looked like since that against the best you know arguably the best opponent he's faced you know obviously removing the leon edwards fight and now you know the eye poke and all that now leon's the champ and all that so yeah i don't even count that shit moves fast in this in this sport but um no yeah like i definitely like yeah you you just said it that's just like this guy's never gonna catch a fan a break with the fans and um like, yeah, you, you, you definitely ought to feel bad. It's like, you know, I think at this point, like, obviously getting, just getting the win, you know, adding this name to your resume. Because now, too, also, you know, you got Gilbert Gilbert Burns' arm injury that yeah, that's what prevented I'm saying. him like, from, you know, throwing the left. and It really sours it. Kind yeah. of. Well, I mean, I think that Bilal is... Right up there with Gilbert. I mean, obviously, a lot of the fans don't really like Bilal. For I don't really, I don't. Do you think it's because of his yeah. fight style? Because he's a good dude. I don't understand why it's, people don't it's like beca- him. It's because of his fight. It's because of his fight style, and because you know he comes off as just like you know, just like delusional and corny and all that. <laughs> Um, I liked him going heel though at the press conference yeah, when dude, the fans were booing him. MMA Twitter, MMA Twitter really does not let this man breathe. It is no. a little much, but um, I mean, even in person, dude, he was like, "This is why the Nets left New Jersey." I was like, "That was pretty funny." <laughs> like but that. yeah, like there's no denying he's a vocal guy. But like, you have to be in this division for one, and two, like he is reeling off wins over legit names, and yeah. like he's been around for a while. Like I think you know by now. See, now this is where we have to talk about, like, is, because the title shot, I, I don't I don't think the title shot's next. Well, but, I think it is, but it's not direct. I think he gets the winner of Colby. Because Dana okay. said, like, officially, the, okay. like, the winner of this fight. Because I was leaning more towards the Colby Covington fight to determine yeah. who's going to fight. I still think that's their, because pl- before this fight, like, in the build, they asked Dana that at the press conference, and he said, Yes, the winner of this fight is getting a title shot, but Colby gets it first. So they're fighting the winner yeah. of that fight. <laughs> which is... Bilal just deserves a title fight. Like, even if it's delayed, I'll take it. I don't care who it's well, against. All right. I mean, we've been... Dude, like, we've been talking about this for a minute. Yeah, and he's dude. had this win streak now. I mean, it's I think it's 9 or 10. Let me look this up. Because the Edwards fight is what messes me up in it. Because I think it's like a 10-fight unbeaten streak. And he hasn't. I know he hasn't lost I since twenty nineteen. I mean, the same way, the same way you're seeing, you know, just everybody, just, just straight up, just, just whatever you want to call it, just bury him and just, you know, not give him like we were just saying the credit that like he sh- should probably should be getting by this point. I think it's also like the same. Like by the time you see 
once we hear that a Ball Muhammad title fight is like officially being announced and like in the works, like you're probably gonna see people rallying. You know, not if Kobe Covington, if Kobe wins the title, if Kobe beats Leon Edwards, and then you have Kobe Covington versus Bilal Muhammad for the title, you're gonna. I think you see a lot sell. of people. Yeah, <laughs> that's you're really see a lot sell. of people rallying around Bilal and like Kobe too, obviously. But um, yeah, that's gonna like yeah, there's gonna be a lot of heat and stuff with that fight. For but sure. um, yeah, yeah I, it's let's a- uh. Yeah, we gotta, yeah, that, so now we've got this fight done, now we gotta wait for the title fight, and See, for go. Bilal, though, and I, this is, like, the last thing I really have on it, too, and one thing, honestly, too, for Bilal, respect to him, because he was, like, fresh off Ramadan, like, straight into training camp, so, like, for anybody who doesn't know, like, he wasn't, yeah, he was fasting for, like, I, I don't know how long Ramadan is, but it's a decent amount of time, and he just jumped right into a training camp, and won this fight against a killer like Gilbert Burns, but Bilal seems to have, like, the same type of luck that Aljo has in the sense that every win that he has seems to have, like, some sort of dumb excuse to it, like, from the fans. Like, for Sean Brady, it was, like, he's not that good. You know, um, Leon Edwards, like, when he did fight Leon, he didn't, he, he was losing before the eye poke. Now this one, it's Gilbert Burns' injury, but he was doing good before that. So, like, I, I just feel bad for Bilal because I think he's, one of the better guys in that top five, and I think he could definitely be champ very yeah, soon. Just gotta like, you know, he's, he's been clearly he's been weathering just all that, you know, adversity and stuff that's been put yeah. in front of him. So like, I mean, there you go. Can't he's take it away from him. Like he's gonna be, he's more than likely gonna be getting a title fight. So um, yeah. What do you think? And uh, actually, this is the last thing I really want to cover with it because it's an interesting thing. Because stylistically, I think that both of those fights, whether it be Colby or Leon go differently because Bilal eats like a ton of leg kicks in all of his fights, wins and losses. So I think if he fights Leon, that's going to come up to haunt him. But if he fights Colby, Colby's not the type who's going to be attacking the legs like that. But Colby's pace with the wrestling is insane. At the same time, Bilal doesn't really get taken down. I mean, we saw Gilbert try. Yeah. It's But, you know, Colby's a better wrestler than Gilbert. But at the same time, Bilal's takedown defense, I'm pretty sure, is like upwards of 90%. So, it's an interesting, like, fight no matter who it's against, I think. It's just for different reasons. But, either way, Bilal is one of those guys who's just improved so much over the years. And I'm happy to see him near the top. And at this point, hopefully getting a title shot. But, to move down the card a tiny bit. Um, the fight before that, Yan Xiaonan. See, I got that one, dude. I had that one prepared. I literally have it. So, like, I write notes for these, like, here's a peek behind the curtain for everybody. I write, like, the notes for the pod, and, you know, we'll talk about it beforehand. And for this one, dude. I knew it was going to be bad. I So I typed it out, like, with the pronunciation. I was like, I can't butcher this girl's name dude, after that yeah, win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, was about to ju- I was literally about to say, after that win, you better not. You better get that right, because tsh, Jessica and Draw, it's like... That ain't no slouch, clearly. So yeah, I don't know what she was doing. I wouldn't even that say was clearly, like the worst yeah. game well, plan. Though. I can't say clearly after that fight. That was um, a weird one because like she just followed her. Like it was, she was walking her down, and then it. You ever notice how when um, people are getting walked down in MMA, when someone's up against the cage and they like turn off to an angle, the person doesn't turn with them. They usually like kind of just try to cut them off. Jessica Andrade was like turning with her. So like she was going towards the cage. And then when like Jan was going this way, Andrade just followed yeah. her instead of cutting her off. That's pretty, it's pretty unfortunate. I think, yeah, like, you know, I don't think it's no secret now that because before with Aaron Blanchfield, you could have obviously said the short notice and then obviously like one of the best up and coming contenders in the division today. So you could have said all that, but now that's fight like, Man, this it's yeah, man. I um, it looks like we're seeing Jessica Andrade probably like on her way out, like in I don't know how many fights, but um, yeah, these um, these up and coming freaking flyweights. Man. Well, she's this was strawweight. Oh, this, this was straw. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's either right. way though, I was gonna bring this point up because you mentioned kind of where she's at in her career and like. I, this argument is still valid no matter like what weight class you thought the fight was in. But, <laughs> but like my point here was just gonna be like Andrade now going back down to straw weight and having this loss. She's in a tough spot because I feel like she's still at like a point where she could beat top fighters, but she's not in the title picture at this point. So it's what are you even fighting for? 
But she doesn't strike me as the type who's going to just kind of go away into retirement after something like that, to be honest. No, yeah. But, you know, in terms of just, I guess, you know, competition and who, like, who she's going to start, who they're going to start matching her up against, like, it's not, you know, it's not going to be, it's either, you know, it's either going to be, like, uh, Aaron Bunch food or freaking... I think it's going to be that, like, yeah. that, those types of matchups, yeah, exactly. the up-and-coming ones, and they're, like... It sucks that she's in a spot right now where she's almost going to be like a gatekeeper at this point. And at this point, it's multiple weight classes. But at the same time, like this fight really was her own downfall because, you know, Jan's a fast striker. But at the same time, they showed it in slow motion. Like when you're coming at somebody with three straight looping left hooks, the left side of her face was open for so long and she just got clipped. And Hmm. you could see it coming. That's what I'm saying. Right when that fight started... You could kind of see that it wasn't going to go well just yeah. because of how she was pressuring her and how like bad the footwork was behind it. And it's weird for like someone like Jessica Andrade to have like such an IQ slip like that because you know me, I'm not the type who really likes ragging on a fighter like when even when they lose. Like I like to kind of, I guess, be more delicate with my criticism because you know me and you are just two assholes sitting here talking. But these guys are the and girls are the ones who are getting in the cage and you know using their blood, sweat, and tears to get our entertainment you know but this fight was just tough to watch for andras but for jan i mean i hope she gets a huge fight again after this she's had a couple of nice wins in the ufc and this is probably her biggest one on the biggest stage too like good pay-per-view and like a big finish of like a former champion i hope that they push her further up the ranks at straw weight but i don't know i just don't really think there's much to talk about in that fight because it's not like one of those ones where like a, a casual audience wouldn't be able to figure out why Jessica Andrade lost. Because like, I think one of the things that we like doing here is kind of, I guess, educating more of the casual fans on like what they like what they should be looking for in certain fighters. But this one, like, you could be brainless and watch how Andrade was coming forward and see that Jan was probably going to knock her out. Like it, it was just bad. I don't know like what she was. I feel bad because I like Jessica Andrade a lot. Like. I just don't know. I mean, like I said, three straight left hooks. I mean, come on. Like, you can't be going at somebody who's that fast with that type of combination. But, hey, man, we'll see what happens for both of them after this. But this fight I'm really actually excited to get into. Diego Lopez versus Movsar Evloev. Or Evloev. See, now I'm starting to get them down. Now that, I'm like, now that I've shit on myself so much for these pronunciations, I'm starting to actually get them. But, uh... Yeah, this fight was originally Evloya versus uh, Bryce Mitchell, but Bryce pulled out with an injury. So Diego Lopez came in on short notice, and not many people were giving him a chance. But, dude, he almost pulled off a crazy upset like five, six times in that fight. He had an arm bar that was deep. That knee bar at the end was really deep. A couple of Kimuras there. Like, shit, dude, that was... What do you, like, I don't even know like where to start with that one because you could give Diego Lopez all the props in the world or be worried about where Ev Loyev is in the division. I mean, I'll leave it to you. What was like the thing that stuck out to you in this fight? Um, yeah, I, get, I hear what you're saying, and I feel the same way in the sense that it seemed like, yeah, like the fact that it seemed like for like a minute that Diego Lopez had him beat in that first round, like, you know, specifically where it you could argue that he won that round entirely. Um, yeah, it would, it did cause, cause, confer- cause for concern because I don't think, you know, with this, you know, considering the circumstances and, you know, you know, just, just straight up, just match up, just like, you know, how, um, you know, how much more, how much more just up and coming, like up and coming and, uh, just all around skilled that, if Loyev is for this division, um, it does raise, it, it does raise like, yeah, it, it maybe, I don't want to say red flag, definitely not that because he did handle the rest of the fight like handedly and rightfully so. But um, it just seemed like Lopez, like he just had to give, you know, give everything, just blow the gas tank in that first round. And then from there, if Loyev, all he had to do was just control the pace and that's what he did. So, um, I mean, yeah. still though, Lopez was like, he almost finished him at the end of the fight. Like, and That's a couple true. times in the third, yeah. I agree with you. Like, I think if Loyev was controlling for this wrestling, division but... too, and I want to like, cause I just want to like touch on that too, in terms of like controlling the pace and all that, like for this sure. division, like that's, 
you know, that's great and all and whatnot, but, um, you know, I like, you're gonna, like, you gotta, you know, you gotta be ready to strike, you gotta be really for, ready for really anything for, like, especially, you know, that top 15 and all that, like, you know, just, just, you know, I don't want to call it, not to say that's what Loyev did, but, you know, like, point fighting and all that, like, it's probably not gonna cut it all that much in featherweight, so, um, yeah, I don't know, was... like, yeah, I think we gotta start seeing some finishes, some, some more finishes from Loyev, and then, uh, all we'll decisions. Really talking. Yeah, exactly. exactly. All decisions. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, because yeah. he's so dominant. Like, you think he would have a finish by now, but he just yeah. doesn't, man. Yeah. You're right. I think as he gets more up the ranks, and I think this fight, I would, I don't want to say exposed him, but it definitely showed that he does have some weaknesses, and you can get him in submissions if you scramble for them. But um, I don't know. I, I think that they're gonna build him up still. I think maybe a little slower now. How do you think he would have done against Bryce after that? Because Bryce has some nasty submissions. Yeah, man. Um, I think I think that would have that fight would have fell, still fell a little more in line with this fight in terms of I think you would have seen a decision and a closer fight at that too. And I don't think um, I don't think Bryce Mitchell would have necessarily came as close to finishing uh, him as as Lopez did. But um, uh, yeah, you definitely would have seen some like really sick grappling exchanges and all that and um perhaps a finish on the ground but um i think it would have still seen a decision and it wouldn't have been as decisive as this fight how much you want to bet that ortega takes the fight with evloyev now that he's seen that there's holes in the (laughs) jiu-jitsu because i remember that he was talking about that fight and he said yeah if he earns it we can we can talk about it that's what i'm saying man with a guy like freaking t city like it doesn't matter whether the whether or not the fight ends in a finish like um you know, you can't be looking to just, you know, just tag, just tag as much as you can and then, you know, just win any grapple exchange because, yeah, that's a lot easier said than done. Um, I think so. that's the fight to make, to be honest, because Brian Ortega is in an odd spot at Featherweight yeah, right now. So. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I just, um, I guess, you know, I don't know, because for a guy like Brian Ortega who has already breaking, broken that glass ceiling, whereas of Loyov, who, you know, still... I feel like we're yet to see that. Um, I don't know. Like it would. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's. I don't know. We'd have to. We'd have to see. It's that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, there was another good featherweight fight though, right before this. Uh, well, I stre- I mean, mean good as in performance for <laughs> Charles Jordan because Crone Gracie, man. I don't know what the game plan was coming in, but that was that was a rough one. Like I don't know what he thought was gonna happen because. He's coming in with that last name. Charles Jordan isn't going to like really engage like that with him on the ground. Like, yeah, he was with him on top, but he's not going to be taking crazy risks. And really, Crone wasn't either, though. He just kind of had him in his closed guard, and he wasn't even scrambling that much. Like, it was, I, don't, I don't really know how to explain that one, to be honest. Like, my, my biggest thought was, like, he made jiu-jitsu look really bad in that fight. Like, if... If I was a casual fan and I knew nothing about jujitsu and someone told me that like that's the guy, his family do, like these guys are the ones, and then I saw that, I'd be like, dude, this is ridiculous. But I think people need to know from the jump that jujitsu can be utilized in MMA way better than that. I I, I I don't know what he was trying to do there. Like, cause when he pulled guard at first, you're like, okay, he's gonna be playing from bottom and he's gonna try and scramble from there, but he just wasn't doing much from his back. So I don't even know what, what he was trying to get done there. But I don't know. I mean, his demeanor all week was weird, too. Did you see that one clip of him in uh, Cejudo? Please tell me you saw that. <laughs> Hold on. Let me think. The, nah, oh, dude, my, all right, I'll not. tell you about this. It's um, It was in Embedded. And you know how like they signed the posters during fight week? So um, Cejudo was in there, and he like walked in there. He's like, what's up, dude? And he was like just kind of doing small talk with him and Cejudo was being like his cringe self like on camera and at one point like you could tell that like Crone was already kind of not having it but then Henry was like signing he goes man thank god I'm so good looking and Crone right away is like he just puts down the pen he's like let me know when this guy's done and he walked out and Cejudo's like was he talking is he mad at me and I was dying dude I was like Crone I I respect Crone too for just saying it right in front of him like not not going like behind his back and like talking shit like he said it right in front of him just like yeah let me know when this guy's done i'm not doing this <laughs> but, oh man 
So like, he was having an attitude all fight week, though, and then just to see that performance to cap it off, I don't know, man. He had four years off, and to be frank, like there was really just no improvement. And like, because if you watch the Cub Swanson fight, that was didn't, worse than he the hasn't Cub adapted fight. essentially. No, and I figured that there was a chance he might because you know the long layoff, he switched gyms. I'm like, hopefully somebody said something, but I don't know. He comes from that kind of like Diaz school of thought because it's like he originally was training with them. I don't, I'm I would assume he still trains with them like from time to time and stuff. But he just seems to not be improving in the stand up and the wrestling. His game is just solely jujitsu. But and someone that I was with last night brought up a good point. Like Hoist Gracie wasn't even like that. Like he wasn't just pulling guard. Like he was taking guys down. So it's not you can't even blame that because even his relatives didn't really fight in that way. But I don't know, man. Like, if he's going to want to fight more in the UFC, he's got to improve because on the feet it was tr- even more atrocious than on the ground. Because I-, I don't know if you saw on the feet, he had no head movement whatsoever. He was no just getting tagged. The softest, the softest hands, like, I've ever seen. It was it was bad. Like, yeah. That was one of the more rough performances I think I've seen in a long time from somebody who they were really – hyping up coming in like this was like the big comeback and like man even dana was like you know he's like i like him as a person but i don't know what he was thinking coming into this one to be honest but hey man that was the main card it was a fun one nonetheless i mean there were some good fights on there good technical battles but let's get into some of these prelims a little bit. The first one that I have on here was um, Dober versus Frivola. That one lived up to the hype. Yeah, man. this is this is actually just the only one that I got to catch. I got to catch okay. the main event of the prelims. I definitely needed to catch this one. I feel, um, yeah, and it delivered for the amount for the freaking length that it was. I mean, you weren't. Yeah. Just, I don't think anyone was really expecting it to deliver like that. But dude, the steam Robola <laughs> is dude. here. I honestly, I I was thinking Dover was gonna take this one coming in, but for Vola, man, I mean, that I guess that crowd kind of gave him some juice because he's from New York, so it's fairly local. And uh, yeah, man, man like, it's good to see this. It's really, it, dude. It's good to see the steamroller keep on rolling. Like it really is. Like I love the chant too. Like post fight, like everybody steamroller. <laughs> like the whole crowd. It's so awesome. Like I love that. Yeah, he really commanded he's, it he's that a time. Good guy for sure. Um, and yeah, dude, he keeps he the, these names keep getting bigger for him. Um, he gets the main event of the prelims. And, um, hell yeah, man, Drew Dober's a huge name in this freaking lightweight division, I feel, and, um... I will yeah. say this, I think calling out Patty Pimblett is, like, a huge yeah, mistake good, for everybody uh, who does it, because he's not yeah, fighting, he's not gonna be fighting. I did see that, 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 um, that, like, headline, but I didn't, I didn't read much into it. See, um, like, my thing isn't, like, I don't think he's gonna get it, I just think, well, he's not, just, but not because Patty wouldn't want it, it's just Patty just had, like, ankle surgery, he's I, gonna yeah, be out until, like, I, I next get year. I, I get it, too, yeah, it was was pretty silly but like i get it too like this yeah, is well he's not that... the only one though like every like you see it on the fight nights all the time with the lightweights nowadays they're calling him out i'm like do you guys yeah, pay any attention like, yeah that isn't a great look you know it seems like or it seems like all right like are you really letting you know patty pimblet of all, of all people like take up this much you know headspace in terms of like this many people are calling him out and stuff like i think they see it as an easy fight right they now. do some they of these do. guys they see it as an easy fight and obviously obviously like chance to capitalize on a freaking dana white's boy so because somebody's like, gonna yeah. get it at this like if he doesn't improve on like really ever because jared gordon man he was tagging him on the feet he was doing a good job holding them up exactly, against the cage man. like yeah. patty needs to get a lot better like that's just what it is <laughs> So I think any either Dober or Frivola would probably do some bad things unless Patty heavily improves. But yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> since you didn't get to see much of the other prelims, I'll just kind of quickly kind of go through some of the ones that I've noticed. Um, Kennedy, um, his name always kills me. You know who I'm talking about, African Savage. This That's his nickname. Round one submission, if I'm not mistaken. I think it might have been round two. But okay, well, I could check. I have topology open, but this fight was crazy because Devin Clark started off so strong. It was round two, by the way, um, and then just completely gassed out in the second. And the standing guillotine that Kennedy had at the end of it was just nuts. 
But then the other prelims from there, there were some nice knockouts. Parker Porter had a nice one at heavyweight. Ikram Aliskarov over Phil Hawes, man, that one was brutal. Yeah. That dude has gave a tough fight to Hamza back in like the days when he was wow. fighting in Russia. So <laughs> yeah, well, that's a name to be keep your eye on. You know what I'm saying? He, I think he only has one loss, and it's two Hamza. So there we go. That's oh, a, that's shit. somebody to look. Keep your eyes on yeah. Ikram Aliskarov at 185, Ikram guys. Because Phil Hawes is no joke, and he slept them pretty. Bad. That was a bad knockout, dude. But. The last one I really wanted to cover was pretty much buried in the prelims for some reason. Verna Jandaroba versus uh, Marina Rodriguez. That was a fun yeah, stylistic I one. I saw but... this on the card, but it's like, yeah, I didn't get to catch much of these early prelims. And so this one's one of these that I missed that I didn't want to miss. Yeah, but, it um... sucks. Like, I don't know why they buried it. It's a good fight and important at straw weight, too. But Jandaroba got the win by a unanimous decision, and it was a clear one. I mean, she just took. Marina down and dominated her on the ground. It was weird because Marina wasn't even really trying to get up as much in the beginning. She was trying to grapple off her back, but against someone who's as good at jiu-jitsu as Virna is, I thought that was like ill-advised, and I think that probably contributed to the fact that she didn't really have that sense of urgency when she really needed it. But I don't know. Overall, there were some really good performances. I thought... You know, the UFC coming back to New Jersey was really cool. It's been a minute. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, right? Let's Last go. one was Lawler versus Colby back in, Jeez, like, 2019. Man. Like, yeah, dude. I was talking to it about... I was talking about it with my brother late last night. He had, he had it rolling. I was like, dude, can you believe it? Like, UFC is, like, back in New Jersey. It's like, dude, well, what's so surprising about it? Like, John Jones won. You know, like, John Jones defended his title in New Jersey. I'm like, yeah, but that was, you know, that was back then. Like, nowadays... Like, won it and defended it. Nowadays, it. like, we were at a point, like, we were thinking, like, they would never come back to New Jersey. But, um, yeah, it's cool to see. Yeah, um, man. Yeah. I'm happy about it. Before we go, last thing I really wanted to talk about, again, like I'm just going to quickly talk about one championship. They made their American debut, which I thought was cool for them. Uh, it was in Colorado. They sold it out. They did announce that. Um, and it was a fun card too, man. It kind of snuck up on me. Like I knew it was happening, but I didn't realize it was coming this quickly. So I only got to see like some of it. But the main things that I, I got out of it, obviously Demetrius Johnson is one of the greatest fighters that we've ever seen, you know, I've kind of been begging the question because he's like the sleeper pick for goat nowadays. I think, I think in my opinion, it's John, John Jones, but mighty mouse, man, he's tough well, three yeah, to four. Yeah. We had, we, we, we've had, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't recall specifically. It was probably just a segment on an episode we were doing where we, we were talking about, you know, some of the goats and who we could, you might think the undisputed goat is and now like we can revisit that like in a little way like now that john jones is freaking heavyweight champion of the ufc and um and then yeah demetrius johnson is still like defending his belt seemingly like every single freaking week it feels like like um yeah man it really is like it's but in one cha- in one championship too like once again like that i like that that's got to be prefaced with how that promotion runs things and it's freaking awesome so um they put on a great fucking product dude yeah, that's man. like what it is um, there were some good moments too sage northcutt came back 39 seconds heel hook win stamp fairtex she's a muay thai fighter and one who i've had like my eye on for a minute because she's like i guess well liked with the fans over there in asia but i she has some crazy highlights and in this one she had a nice liver i think it was a liver kick knockout so that was cool but Either way, you know, like I said, we'll kind of cover that in detail more next week because I kind of want to talk about how they're received in the U.S. and if they can ever really reach those heights with the UFC. I think it's like deserving of its own separate video, so we'll cover it in there. But we hope you guys enjoyed. We'll be back next week. See you guys then.